Yeah. So today there are so many problems in the society and uh, these efforts that we are making, this will take a long time to make any dent or any impact in the society. So do you think that a revolution is required to get this uh, change to happen? This is uh, a question quite frequently asked when we have the eight day face to face workshops. Uh, one thing to understand here is that uh, what goal do we carry while we are making some program? So there are four things. First thing is to have the right understanding and right feeling. That would be the all encompassing solution, the Samadhan. The second thing is to make effort to materialize this solution so that everybody in the society can have the right understanding, right feeling, completeness. Now, given the situation in which we are residing today, we can make an appraisal of the current state of problems. And then we can have the effort, we can make the effort to remove these problems. So we have to rightly prioritize these four things. See, if I go in Hindi, then the first is Samadhan. So to have the clarity of Samadhan. The second would be Samadhan Kle Prayas to make this Samadhan available to every human being. The third would be Samasya Ki Samicha, appraisal of the problems that are existing today. And fourth would be Samasya Ko Dur Karne Ka Prayas, the effort to remove these problems. Now, where do we start from? What is our program? So many times it so happens no, that when we get pained by looking at the situation in the society, we start from three and directly go to four without working for one and two. Since we do not work at one and two, then many a times we get into opposition with the people who are involved in the problem or those who are creating the problem. We get into opposition with them. We lack trust for them. And then it may also happen that they are creating one kind of problem and we start creating another kind of problem. And that has happened so many times in the history that might happen in the society even today. So if we are not working for ensuring right understanding, right feeling in ourselves, then we are not able to exhibit definite human conduct. And then we are not able to relate rightly to the people with whom we are trying to struggle or even with those with whom we are trying to work our own team. So this is a common uh, mistake that we commit. So we get perturbed by looking at the problems in the society, but we do not have a sustainable solution. We do not have the complete vision of the society that we really want to be in. A society that is able to fulfill the human goal, the society that is able to uh, develop the five dimensions. So we first need to fix our program for realizing the human goal. In that process, we'll be in a better position to evaluate the current state and work to remove the current problems. Otherwise, we may create more problems than solutions. And this is something that we have to deeply think about because there is a section of society today who is into revolution, trying to change the society, trying to remove the problems from the society. But we can see that they are themselves not able to exhibit definite conduct. And the team also disintegrates after some time. So they start working first, bringing some solution, but they themselves are having complaints for each other, grudges for each other, right? And when we try to assign some responsibility to them, then they may not be able to fulfill that responsibility sustainably. And after some time, they themselves exhibit definite, indefinite conduct. So this is something for us to decide where to start from. So for all such issues, it may be the issue of one section of society or some other section of society. We have to fix our program first. Even at the level of individual, when I'm working in an organization, I may be perturbed by looking at some problem in my workplace, in my neighborhood. Okay. And then we may jump into some activity in the form of a solution by opposing those who are creating problems. But if we ourselves are not having the solution, in completeness, we ourselves do not have the right understanding, right feeling, then we are not able to assure the people around 
So the people who are looking at us get caught up into two difficult situations. One is to continue with the problem. The second is to jump into another kind of problem. So we have to think about this, where to start from. According to me, the solution would be to start from one. So presently what we are doing, we are trying to ensure one. Right? And then when we are taking it forward through education, it is effort to derive the solution through education, through some sustainable mode. So one and two can be a continuous program. Three and four is a temporary program. And with one and two only, we are able to do the step three also correctly, the appraisal of the current state. Unless I am having values within me, how can I rightly evaluate the other? This is something to really introspect. If I'm not having the understanding of values within me, how can I evaluate the other? So in place of evaluating the other, we just try to judge the other. We try to find faults with the other. So the other also gets affronted uh, because many a times when we are not looking at the good things being done by the other, we are only pointing out at the wrong things. Then the other also gets confronted with us. So uh, with one and two only, this three is feasible. And with one, two and three only, the four can be feasible in a sustainable mode. So when somebody is creating a problem also in the society, we have to rightly evaluate the other. It's not that we'll just look at the lack of competence of the other. We'll also look at the competence that the other is having. So maybe when we are able to develop the competence in the other, the other can become a part of our team in place of being an opponent. Because a position can never be the foundation of a sustainable, happy, prosperous society, a harmonious society. Ultimately, we have to work for undivided society. And we cannot start with opposition because that will lead to divisions. And we can see over the ages, divisions have never led to a happy and prosperous society. Mm. Yeah. So what you're saying is that we need uh, evolution, not revolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For time being, if some uh, temporary step is also to be taken, we can take, but only with right understanding, right feeling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> True. Today in society, there is a huge disparity between the haves and the have-nots. So, um, how do we address this gap? Yes. So, we need to understand that the basic aspiration <clears throat> is continuity of happiness and prosperity. And this is ensured by right understanding, right feelings alone. It is not determined by the position of physical facilities. So, one may be having a lot of position of wealth, the other may not be having so much. But when we compare in terms of wealth, we see a lot of disparity. When we are going to compare in terms of happiness, in terms of the feeling of prosperity, there may not be so much of disparity, or at least this disparity may not be related to the position of wealth at all. So whether one belongs to the category of haves or have nots, what essentially matters is the correct recognition of the need for physical facility, which is possible only through right understanding and right feeling. And secondly, we need to know that our basic aspiration is continuity of happiness, and it does not have a direct relation with physical facility. This is something that we discussed partly in the previous uh, discussion also. So many a times we look at the position of wealth and see a lot of disparity. Today also it is said that 2% of the population is possessing 98% of wealth. Many times figures like this come out. But is it so that the 2% who are possessing 98% of wealth are having 98% of <laughs> happiness in the society? <laughs> Certainly not. So you have to see. Uh, and in fact, looking at a personal level, evaluating within ourselves also, we can see that human being is coexistence of self and body. The physical facility can serve only the need of the body. My need is uh, happiness, which is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling. Second thing to observe is that if we have physical facility below a certain level, it's a problem. But if we have physical facility above a certain level, then also it's a problem. Mm. For example, if I require food, when we evaluate in terms of currency or money, no, then this becomes a little difficult to explore. But just try to explore in terms of physical facilities. Let's say if I require food, 
my hunger is for 10 chapatis in a day. Now, if I, ha I have only five chapatis in a day, it's a problem because I will feel hungry. But if I have to eat 15 chapatis in a day, then also it's a problem. At mm -hmm. the most, I'm going to accumulate whatever food I have extra for me. And then when I accumulate, it will hamper my relations because somebody who is getting deprived will feel opposed to me. Now, how do I sort out this kind of problem without sharing with the other? Then some kind of uh, unethical practice will get involved. Some kind of ill feeling will get involved when I have to relate to the other. Mm. And then the society starts getting divided. Then we ourselves start getting divided in our neighborhood with the rest of the society. So we have to observe that if I have physical facilities below a certain limit, it's a problem but if i have above a certain limit then also it's a problem in fact we can see that something that we start with while discussing uh, the content in level one that is the five day online workshop that most of the problems in our families are not due to lack of physical facility they are due to lack of relationship and when there is accumulation on one part and deprivation on the other part then there is not going to be sustainable or there is not going to be fulfilling relationship so there have been many revolutions also in the society over the ages when people have got perturbed by the difference in position of wealth between haves and have-nots. But ultimately we have seen that by focusing at physical facilities, ultimately no peace and harmony can be ensured in the society. It is only possible when I, at a personal level, am able to see very naturally that the need for physical facilities is limited. If I am not able to see this and somebody imposes that you only have to consume this much, it becomes a kind of domination over me and I am not able to accept the other. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, it's very clear that uh, seeing the number of obese people that, uh, you know, when we have yes. more, then we are causing more problem for ourselves. True. In fact, it is also being said that some years back, people were struggling for food. Now, many people in the society are struggling what not to have as food so that they are not <laughs> obese, so that they do not suffer in mm -hmm. terms of health. Yeah. True. At one point of time, we were quite, you know, living peacefully in our own country. Then we got you know, invaded from outside the country, we got enslaved. Now, even if we are able to make this program effective, what is the guarantee that this will not happen again? Again, if we get invaded, same thing will not happen. Yes. In fact, we have a long history of invasion in our country, and this is a common apprehension. So that's why if you see the vision at the level of society is in terms of undivided society. And when we say undivided society, we are talking of the world of family. So it's not that we are going to work in pockets. We are going to work only in this part of the world and not communicate to the other parts of the world. The moment I am able to see that I am related very much to every human being. So how can I spare a human being on, in another part of the world who is not having the right understanding and right feeling? So very gradually and very naturally, we are going to relate to every human being. So it may be the case that earlier we had made efforts for right understanding, right feeling, but we could not reach out to the rest of the world. And when some changes took place in other parts of the world, then we were dominated, we were invaded, we were subjugated uh, by the rest of the world. And we have to also see uh, what can be done proactively not to have this kind of scenario again. Mm -hmm. So many a times it has, it might have happened that we focused on the need of the self, but we did not take care of the need of the body properly. In some part of the world, need of the body was focused too much and need of the self was not addressed that well. So there uh, started some disparity. In fact, if you see uh, most of the invasions took place when arms and ammunition were developed in one part of the world and to just sell them off or to uh, use them for some purpose or the other, invasions took place. Another reason that has been there is when industrial revolution took place uh, in the Europe and mass production started 
and with that mass production they wanted more and more consumers and with that invasion started so now with right understanding right feeling we have the proper program for education in fact this education is the fundamental program for an undivided society so we discuss the steps for self organization of the world family and when the content of education is universal it is going to be accepted by all so that's why we have set certain basic guidelines that when we are taking this content forward those basic guidelines have to be obeyed and by going uh, through those uh, or by obeying those basic guidelines we can reach out to every person on this earth and with a feeling of relationship we are able to see that we are very much related we are also able to see that it is our responsibility to to take the value based education across the world so that we can be an undivided society but again we have to work on ourselves first second thing i would like to mention that many a times we are moving to the rest of the world but are we going there with a solution with a content of education so that we are able to harmonize the rest of the world or we are going to seek solution for ourselves that makes the difference so still today many of us are migrating or moving to the countries uh, outside our country but are we going there with a state of solution with all encompassing resolution or we are going there as seekers of happiness or seekers of prosperity so that is something again that we have to look into so we will move to the rest of the world but with a feeling of happiness with a feeling of prosperity with right understanding and right feeling and for that we have to work intensively on value based education and every human being intentionally wants to be happy and wants to make other happy only that people are looking for solutions sustainable solutions if you are able to develop uh, role models in uh, in the form of human beings in the form of institutions who are able to exhibit this kind of conduct this kind of living then certainly every human being will feel interested and enthused to work for it and then we'll be able to work as a world family are we also thinking about some sort of a world government like one government yes. for the whole world in fact stephen hawking uh, before he died uh, was writing some articles and in one article he also mentioned that now we need to have a world government in fact when we look at the 10 steps of universal human order so that is one way in which the whole world can be organized so we can start with a family of 10 people then we can go to the family cluster and then we can go to village that is cluster of cluster of families and so on and so forth and then we can properly allocate uh, the resources also how and where to be utilized presently one part of the world is being exploited by another part of the world so in fact the areas in which abundance of natural resources are there are leading a uh, living a life of deprivation and the areas where there is no abundance of resources are many a time feeding a life of affluence but when we have this kind of orderliness in the society when we have this vision for universal human order then uh, we'll have peace and harmony across the world but again second thing to note here is that my happiness will not depend upon <clears throat> orderliness in the world my happiness is going to be determined only with my own right understanding right feeling and then uh, i can be participating in terms of universal human order every moment so each one of us has to become an order in oneself and participate in the larger order leading to universal human order so are we saying that um, we will all become like this diversity will go away and we'll all be one and um uh, the nations there will be no nations no boundaries like that uh so there will be uniformity in terms of understanding and feeling but there will be diversity in terms of expression so even today we have diversity in our living in our skills <clears throat> in the physical facilities that we use depending upon the geographical conditions the local conditions the traditions so that kind of diversity will sustain so even with that diversity we will have the feeling of relationship so diversity in itself is not a problem the problem is when we are not feeling related we do not have the understanding of coexistence so like here also when we are living in the same nation we have 
a family which is living in a particular house and then we have neighborhood so there is a diversity in that uh, small area also so that kind of diversity will be there at for self organization of every unit be it the unit of family or the family order uh, or a cluster of families similarly it can have at the level of nation also this organization will be visible but mm -hmm. the way we are relating to our neighbors the way we have to invest physical facilities due to opposition due to fear due to exploitation that will be not required mm -hmm. so what we are saying the, uh, 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 is also another uh, question that does occur but with that we, we can only say that uh, there will be uniformity there will be commonality in terms of understanding feeling goals but there will be diversity in terms of expression in living mm. so there will be definiteness of our conduct globally yes. but then yeah okay um how are we planning to transition from the value education to value based education from the workshops that we are doing now to having all of education to be value based yeah so we have started with value education but gradually you have to move to value based education and from there we have to move to value based living so to have value based education we need to base the content in every course on right understanding and right feeling but for that a lot of work is required to be done so there are courses in humanities there are courses in technology there are courses in various skills and we have to base all those skills all the information sets that we are transferring to the students on this basis and there is a lot of possibility there is a huge possibility particularly in humanities so for that we'll have to develop the content and in the present system there are several modes also available so we can redefine the graduate attributes something that we discussed while presenting the content in this session so we can redefine the graduate attributes uh, in our courses at the level of institution we can set a holistic vision and mission and so on and so forth so in every institution we have a vision so can that vision be in accordance with the human goal we have a mission we have we have been setting up objectives can that set of objectives be in terms of having an undivided society universal human order prosperity for all fearless in society something on uh, in this line so mm -hmm. uh, for that we need to do some homework in fact all of us who are participating in the session right now we can have a role to play in ensuring value based education so for that we'll have to develop skills also we'll have to develop uh, content to be delivered in fact one team of ours is also working for developing the content uh, for primary and secondary education so this has started as a supplementary course but gradually this has to take the shape of uh, the essence of every course mm. this something required to be done so when we do this uh, for value based education then uh, will we have like a central body that takes care of it or you know have like a network of uh, organizations involved or um, yeah the structure can be thought of uh, mm. in fact if the structure has to be stable it has to be decentralized so to begin with we can start initiating this kind of effort from a particular body but gradually this has to be decentralized and ultimately it has to rest at the level of human being so any kind of structure that we form unless the human beings who are involved are able to ensure these feelings develop this content uh, develop this uh, uh, understanding exhibit this conduct and in themselves it will not be sustainable so to begin with we can have some central bodies at the level of nation or maybe even at the level of world uh, but at the same time this this has to percolate to every section of society and this has to get stated in the imagination of every human being so to begin with we can have some central bodies working for it but gradually it will be there in a completely decentralized manner even today we can see that there are so many things which form our culture and this is completely mm. in a decentralized manner uh, this is something that 
has become a tradition so this has to form the tradition so there could be uh, uh, like patterns of living in which there are certain things which come very naturally that every person is able to see very naturally that the need for physical facility is limited it's mm. not that wants are unlimited wants are unlimited only with lack of right understanding in place of struggle we can see very naturally that existence is coexistence this kind of culture has to be developed and for that uh, education has to uh, take the responsibility and that is quite possible in fact people who have gone through the workshops if you, uh, we interact with them they are many a times able to see or able to share also that uh, this is quite true every human being wants to be happy wants to make the other happy our basic aspiration is uh, happiness not physical facilities not money right existence is coexistence there is no struggle for survival it's only the lack of right understanding because we are struggling because of which we are struggling so gradually it will take the shape of a culture of a tradition of a civilization mm. yeah um well, it seems very far uh, that you know we are, we can do the workshop but to have everybody involved to the level that uh, um they can all be self organized and contribute in this role to society so perhaps yeah it will take time i guess yes it may take time but also if we can see no uh, it is not supposed to take as much time as many times we uh, seem to imagine like we have a written history of about 5000 years and we have not been able to have a uh, way of living presently in the society which can be termed as sustainable uh, but when we are able to take the content in universal rational verifiable manner then it is quite possible and with the enablement of this it uh, this online mode of communication this seems to be still uh, uh, a much faster process so the way we are interacting today in a similar manner we can track with the rest of the world and this could be one mode one thing to uh, take caution about is that every moment i have to propose to the other and let the other evaluate if we are going by that mode then this is quite possible the moment we start describing for the other preaching to the other sermonizing or dictating or dominating then this is not going to be feasible so ultimately each one of us has to work for realization within the self and to uh, exhibit uh, definite human conduct in completeness this is one major responsibility that we have to see that ultimately the world is going to be at peace when i am going to be at peace within so if i am not at peace within the world is not going to be at peace but at the same time the world is going to uh, made at peace then and it does not ensure that i am also at peace so i have to work for understanding in completeness within me i have to work for completeness of definiteness of conduct at my own level first this is something that i has to that i have to accept as the foundation of an undivided society universal human order so something that we keep on saying every time that i have to be an order uh, at the level of self then only i can participate in the larger order so that way only we have to move and that way only we can have the transition from a value education to the value based education so you said that uh, uh, for all this attending the workshop is sufficient no uh, certainly the workshop is only a mode of transmission of the content for right understanding that also partly so attending a workshop is an initiation but ultimately uh, i have to self explore i have to look into my imagination and find out whether my imagination is completely in accordance with my natural acceptance so attending the workshop is just one part of the program it cannot be the complete program ultimately <clears throat> the completeness of the program is to ensure realization and understanding in me contemplation of values in me and for that each one of us each one of us has to devise one's own modes how to ensure realization that is something that we are still exploring into how to ensure realization how to ensure 
understanding and completeness, how to ensure contemplation of all the value. Attending workshop is just one part of the solution. And you're saying the workshop, is this the only way? Pardon, Bhaiya? You are saying the workshop, like is this, it okay. seems that this is the only way, you are saying this is the only way? Uh, no, I'll say that uh, this is, so if you look at the workshop also, it is one mode of communicating the content of right understanding. So earlier we used to have face-to-face -face workshops. During the lockdown period, it somehow transitioned to online workshops. There could be a mixed mode also. No, I'm saying that this is the only content you're saying. This is the only way to, uh, I mean, okay. so have there this are understanding things. and all that. There There's no other things. way. Okay. This is a pertinent question. So there are two things. One is the way and the other is the content. So about the way we discussed that there could be several ways. And the objective is to ensure realization within the self. When you look at the content, then there have been attempts across the history uh, you know, uh, in various traditions also to reach the state of realization. So every content that has been developed in the tradition can be taken as a proposal. This is just one proposal for each one of us to explore. There might be so many proposals that we might not even be exposed to. So we can look at all those proposals and then investigate them. And whatever comes naturally to me, whatever is able to ensure contemplation, understanding, and realization to me uh, will work for me. So this is again a proposal. And a proposal means that this is not the only thing. So it is coming as a proposal. Whatever comes from any other source needs also to be taken as a proposal. Yeah, the basic guidelines we have to really look into seriously, whether the proposal that I'm trying to evaluate, is that universal or not? Is that rational or not? Is that verifiable or not? And is it leading to harmony or not? So, I mean, getting this proposal or any other proposal, some work has to be done by the individual, not just attending the workshop or yes. the workshop. So, each one of us has to be really serious about ensuring happiness. Even if I am trying to fetch happiness from workshop, that will not work. Yeah, that's what the sense that came earlier was that you attend the workshop and everything is going to be fine. Uh, okay, okay. So let me rectify this. I'm not saying that just by attending the workshop, things are going to be set right completely. But attending a workshop is one part of the program. So as you mentioned that when we go for ensuring transformation at the individual level, then we have to go for self-exploration, self-awareness and self-evaluation. So for self-awareness, uh, for self-exploration, we are getting some content through the workshop. And we can get content from some other activity, some other uh, source of uh, content also, some other uh, program also. So ultimately, I have to self-explore. Then I have to, to be self-aware of my current state of being. And then I have to evaluate myself so that I'm able to transition, I'm able to transform. So this is our proposal, our program, our content but ultimately the goal has to be uh, to see the reality as it is in completeness something that is termed as realization so i have to see the whole existence as it is then only i'm able to ensure happiness and continuity in me and continuity has to be understood continuity means every moment mm -hmm. if i'm trying to fetch happiness from outside <clears throat> uh, then Again, I'm enslaved. I'm uh, dependent on something outside. So mm -hmm. we are attending these meetings. We are uh, interacting with each other. It is only a way to uh, reach the state of solution. So we not say that this is the way. This is our way. At the same time, this is not uh, something complete in itself. Uh, ultimately, I have to ensure the right standing in me by observing the reality as it is. So that observation has to be developed. Yeah. So what you're saying is we can start with the value-based education, but then every individual would have to make their effort and try to see the reality for themselves. Yes. yes. Yeah.
um today um if we see the colleges uh, many of the higher education places the faculty seem to be very uh, you know pressurized to do more and more work so a lot of times they they feel that they don't have time for uh, these additional things like uhb and all so what can how can we resolve that yeah this is a commonly asked question on the first day of every workshop that uh, already we have so many courses and this is an additional input that is being given to us how to accommodate this and this was also asked by one participant in the morning sessions so i'll say that in all such situations we need to prioritize if we have a clear vision about education we will be in a better position to utilize our potential so with little exploration every human being can see that right understanding is the first priority for a human being and we can effectively communicate this to the management faculty and staff so whenever we have so many things to do right so we have to prioritize and this is something that we keep on doing in 24 hours in a day if i have 10 tasks to accomplish then i prioritize in a similar manner if i have to accommodate uh, so many courses in a four year program for a bachelor uh, level let's say a program bachelor level course then we have to prioritize what comes first so if you are able to see very clearly that for every human being right understanding is the first requirement unless we have the right understanding whatever we learn as in terms of skills may be counterproductive also to my own life or to the life of the others so we have to give the right priority and it's a good thing that the top bodies of the country are able to see this priority so some universities started to begin with but gradually now aict is able to see and ugc also is coming forward in bhutan it has been taken up so seriously so we have to prioritize the courses we have to prioritize the activities first thing second thing i'll say that in our institutions also we are doing many things which may not be required and we are doing that due to lack of right understanding right feeling so i can see that there is so much of monitoring in the institutions today and we have to spend a lot of time make a lot of documents for monitoring monitoring the conduct of the students monitoring the conduct of the faculty monitoring uh, the content of education being delivered so if we have right understanding then we are able to decide for ourselves what is my program and what is my participation in this institution and when i am able to have the right feelings <clears throat> then i am able to be responsible to the other so if i have the right feeling in me i am able to see the students as my relative so i'll naturally try to develop them as much as possible in the given uh, scenario so for that i do not need to be observed through some cctv camera i do not need to be observed every moment whether i am coming on time leaving on time whether i am giving assignments or not whether i am evaluating properly or not okay whether i am invigilating during the examination in fact this invigilation also will not be required if the students are able to see uh, the role of this education in their happy life if they are able to feel the need for education for a happy and prosperous life so we have to do so many activities today which are maybe unnecessary in fact we need to sit together and also articulate how many activities we are doing in an institution which are necessary and which are unnecessary thirdly we'll see that due to the uh, kind of environment that we have in institutions we get mentally exhausted many a times we get fagged up we get bored we get anguished at times and then if i have to work for 8 days in a day 8 hours in a day sorry then maybe in those 8 hours i am spending 4 hours passing grudges complaints okay or getting intrigued in me uh, so i am many a time wasting my energy here and there due to lack of right understanding due to lack of feeling in relationship with my peer group with my subordinates with my superiors with the students with the staff so that also has to be taken into account in fact we need to make a thorough study over this so first thing is that what i said is that we have to set the priority of the courses being taught second thing we have to look at the non productive or the unnecessary activity that we are doing in the institutions today many times are giving that as a responsibility we are trying to do them very honestly but that may not be required at all and thirdly we have to look into the right utilization of time energy resources whether we are doing that properly or not 
if i am not happy within when many a times i am sharing my unhappiness with others and this is something that we have observed in many of the institutions so whenever there is a tea break time or we have lunch time what we are sharing we are sharing our complaints <laughs> we have complaints about the management we have complaints about the peer group uh, the person who is just superior to us and we are having so many grudges right and we feel keep on sharing unhappiness even uh, when the faculty meet in the evening let's say they are deciding together then they are again talking about problems in the institutions mm. so can that time be right utilized so according to me there is a lot of time right and we have a lot of energy also and we need to right utilize that mm. so the experience in the past 9 months has shown that through online mode to people can understand and appreciate the importance of such inputs in education so this is another thing so in addition like the time that we are spending in the formal education today the additional time that we have <clears throat> can also be utilized rightly so presently if you see so many of us <clears throat> are interacting together uh, right from 5:30 in the morning and uh, maybe the time that we spend in the morning for 2 hours that helps us utilize the rest of the 22 hours so in fact when we spend time for right and standing right feeling when we give the right priority to this so we may not be even aware but a lot of time and energy is saved a lot of effort that we could that would have been spent for physical facility gets saved so we keep on taking such examples like in the workshop also let me take another example how does this help us explore so we are conducting a workshop in kanpur and a participant shared on the third day that by coming to this workshop my 8 lakh rupees have got saved then we asked him that what happened then he told that he had a car and a friend from delhi came to his house and observed that he is uh, riding the same car that he purchased 5 years back and then he gave him an offer that you come to delhi you sell off this car and i'll show a new model of car to you purchase that so that difference of the amount was 8 lakh rupees so he got enthused also and he planned that next time when he goes to delhi he will not go by train or flight he will go by his own car sell it off in delhi and come in a new car but by attending this workshop he got to know that okay the need for physical facility is limited and the physical facility can never serve to fulfill the need of the self so he got very happy and shared that yes now my 8 lakh rupees have got saved <laughs> we told him that yeah <laughs> told him that uh, it's not uh, a complete achievement in itself so by not selling off this car and purchasing a new car your 8 lakh rupees have got saved but you have to ensure this right understanding in completeness otherwise you will invest it again somewhere else now just think to earn those 8 lakh rupees the person would have invested let's say 2 months of time to save 8 lakh rupees now indirectly those 2 lakh those 2 months time has got saved in a similar manner we faculty of institutions can also see have we really decided our needs properly because many a times we feel bound to keep on earning more and more because we are not able to decide our needs properly so we have to make out the needs clearly many times uh, husband wife both are earning but they are not sure whether they will be able to fulfill all the needs even they even if they work till the age of retirement so we have to make all these things out these are since uh, we have a very close session that we are having right now we can look into all these issues so this is another thing that so through this online mode also uh, certain clarity can come us, come to us and uh, with this clarity we can be in a better position to utilize our time our energy our resources give a higher priority to relationship in our life invest more time for right understanding right feeling this is quite possible Mm. True. That part, you know, is true that we can identify our needs. But if we look at, you know, uh, education today, or even health for that matter, um, it's getting costlier and costlier. And then uh, to see you know our needs whether uh, you know we say that the needs are limited but then when these kind of issues come up which are uh, very important for the family for education of the children 
for the health of the family members then it becomes very difficult to see my need in terms of how much i need to have because in the future i i don't know how much i will need for the child's education how much i will need for our health so these kind of uh, you know it's becoming almost not affordable so what can we do about that yes <clears throat> so let us start with education so when we are trying to locate good institutions good schools then we have to make the right evaluation presently if you see an appraisal will show that value based education is not to be found in most of the schools maybe some experiments are doing being done uh, in some parts of the country or the world but value based education is not prevalent and we may be looking for good schools on the basis of certain pre conditioning or sensation so many times when parents go to locate good schools they will look at the building of the school the way it is structured they will look into the amenities available for the students right uh, but they are not directly looking at the level of understanding the effectiveness of conduct of the teachers of the management so there again we have to make the right evaluation many times we can see that in the neighborhood when parents meet uh, each other then they will talking about the school that they are sending their children to the fee that they are pay, uh, paying and they try to compare the status of the school uh, which school is better because so many amenities are there so many facilities are there but nobody is talking about the content of education the same syllabus of cbsc or icsc is being taught in all the schools right so if you look at the content of education it is uniform now the way it is being delivered may not also vary a lot okay. many times wrong kinds of conditionings are also given to the children in terms of the status of the schools there are schools today which are charging maybe even lakh rupees per month and there are schools which are charging not even let's say 500 rupees per month so there is a huge disparity in terms of the fee that they are paying but we have to see whether the content which is being delivered the way it is being delivered is that proper or not is that based on right understanding or right feeling or not secondly it might be the case that by sending to costly schools we are pre conditioning our own children so they will start giving higher priority to physical facilities and if our children start giving higher priority to physical facilities we will invest all our facilities for our children for their development and ultimately will be at a loss because at sooner or later the student the children will not value this relationship with us with the parents they will value the physical facilities more so we gave the wrong kind of sanskar to the children we invested a lot of wealth for getting them educated and ultimately we are suffering because they are not giving more importance to wealth than relationship and then they, we might be landing up in an old age home in the old age and after uh, setting very bright career for the children so we have to look into all these issues so if we are preconditioned if we are tempted to select certain things out of sensation then we will not be able to locate good schools also so first of all we have to locate good schools but whether that location whether that evaluation is based on right understanding or based on certain preconditionings or sensation that is something very serious that we have to look into true i think you know i can uh... relate to that because yes. um uh, yeah, our children went to a nearby school which is uh, uh, got good education but it is not like uh, one of the international schools or something which has an ac classroom and those kind of things and uh, uh, you know people in the neighborhood some some of them even mentioned to me that how come you are putting your child in that school because that's not where the cream goes <laughs> mm -hmm. yes many times we also think of uh, having good future of our children when they become billionaires or trillionaires we are not able to see the future of children in terms of right understanding and right feeling mm -hmm. and if education is value based the school is more likely to be affordable another thing that we can see is that there has been effort uh, in different societies also for home schooling so in us this is started about 50 years back and many parents when today are going for home schooling even in india this is happening so home schooling is there then there is community schooling also so parents joined together 
so schools run by guardians of the children parents join together we can see many such efforts in bangalore hyderabad even in uh, i think it should be in delhi also so there are many such efforts when the parents join together in bangalore at least i could visit five to six such schools where parents had joined together and they had started a school on their own mm-hmm. so now they can decide the content and the good thing is that up to a certain level of education the content can be devised by the school and after that only you have to go by the prescribed content by the government so that choice is also there so we can have these options also home schooling and i'll say that now uh, some of the material or most of the material is also getting available online so even if somebody is going for home schooling uh there will no dearth of content to be taught to the children so that is another option that we have to weigh so these are certain alternatives which can also be tried so one thing is that when we are trying to look at good schools we have to rightly evaluate on the basis of right understanding right feeling second thing if i am not able to find any good school in the neighborhood then we can go for alternatives this may not be so easy because for that uh uh if we have to build up a team that will that effort will also be required but at least there are alternatives and if there are some alternative schools they can also be tried out and at the most we can uh, join together to run a school on our own which can impart this kind of education so there are certain alternatives that can be thought of uh, but most fundamentally we have to decide what goal do we envision for our children are we trying to make them having physical facility but unhappy and deprived that kind of people or we are trying to make them happy and prosperous with limited physical facilities but having a clarity of the need for physical facilities so that is that is something very fundamental that is something very basic that we have to start with in fact that will also form the sanskar in the family if parents are all the time engrossed in talking about physical facilities their accumulation consumption indulgence then a wrong sanskar will go into the children but if they are talking about right understanding right feeling right utilization right living then another kind of sanskar will go and we can see very clearly that the need for physical facilities is limited another thing i would like to mention that today if you see uh, there are at the most two children in a family when people are getting educated one or two children in the family and then we can also see that the assets that parents have will pass on to the children so there is no need for thinking in terms of accumulating more and more in fact today we see uh, the accumulation is not to fulfill the needs of the body rather it is to fulfill the dependence on sensation or preconditioning many a times in uh, a large part of society today i can say so those facilities are available almost every uh, family who is uh, uh, have, let's say that but that can be looked into having an employment you know has a uh, these facilities and uh, that will pass on to the next generation so uh, <clears throat> we have to really prioritize this right understanding part for our own life and for our own children then education is not going to be a big uh, issue for us mm. if you can also address the health issue because health is something that uh, it's not very predictable and after all i think uh, you know we all feel that uh, you know to be alive the body needs to be healthy and uh, tomorrow if we have ill health there is so much of a cost that uh, we cannot uh, sort of um, identify from now the need for that so yes, so as we had rightly mentioned we elaborated upon it also that ultimately health is going to be ensured through self regulation so we have to work for self regulation when we are and able to ensure self regulation then the likelihood to become unhealthy uh, is less one thing second thing when i am able to see human being as coexistence of self and body and we are able to see that self is central to human being body just an instrument then this fear also of losing health or losing body uh, goes down because many times we are perturbed by these thoughts when we have a lot of fear inside when we assume ourselves to the body then we have a fear of getting unhealthy or losing the body uh, but when we have the right understanding this fear goes away thirdly i say that when we are living with mutually fulfilling relationships when we are uh, having mutually fulfilling interaction with the rest of nature then uh, 
particularly if we talk about human human relationship when we are having mutually fulfilling relationships then it's not only me who has to take care of myself so the need for accumulation also that we sometimes assume goes down so i am taking care of the other and the other can take care of me so when we are talking about exchange also no so we can see that with the feeling of give and give in place of take and take or take and give if we have that kind of relationship inside the family in our interaction with the society so there will be people around to take care of me thirdly fourthly i'll say that if i am leading a value based life then i am valuable to the people around the people feel their own responsibility to uh, keep me healthy this is another thing that we can note if i am valuable to the society if i am valuable to my own family then they will take care of me so i am taking care of them they are taking care of me that kind of living model can also be developed in fact it is not something as a far fetched possibility we have been seeing this kind of possibility uh, in the history also we can see even today in our society so this is also something that we have to take care of and another thing uh, to add to this would be when i am even going for curing my body what measure i am adopting am i directly jumping to some artificial solution or i am able to look into the natural ways of uh, keeping the body healthy also mm. so like let's say if some person has a heart problem right so maybe uh, the medical practices available to they will uh, ask the person to get the heart transplanted or uh, you know something or which can be very costly so can we have the natural ways of curing the body also in fact mm. good thing is that uh, every friday uh we are having a session uh, from 7:30 uh, where we are talking about natural ways of ensuring health and in fact today so much of material is also available online offline where we can take guidance about ensuring the health naturally in fact uh, now uh, these movie actors are also promoting the young kids to take care of their health well so those uh, proactive measures uh, can be taken to ensure good health at the same time when the body becomes unhealthy then we can also go for natural ways of ensuring health so there is naturopathy there is ayurved there are some healing practices and even uh, homeopathy can also serve the need to a large extent if at all these are not uh, proving uh, useful then we can go for allopathy and if at all this is also not proving useful then only we can go for surgery mm. so many a times when we start thinking in terms of ensuring good health we start thinking from surgery itself that i have to go for surgery and what surgery can cost this much a new kind of uh, practice has started in the society that you now people are using uh, these uh, air ambulances and these air ambulances are so costly so if a person has to be carried from let's say a district in bihar to bombay that itself will cost 5 lakh rupees or 6 lakh rupees so we have to be a little serious about all these issues unless i am able to understand the human being as coexistence of self and body i am not able to ensure self regulation and unless i am able to ensure self regulation uh, my body will not be healthy right so mm. and to have the feeling of self regulation in continuity i have to have the right understanding in completeness because ultimately what matters to me is my level of happiness my state of happiness if i am not happy within many times i ruin my body for example if i am not happy within if a person is not happy within one may go for alcoholism alcohol consuming alcohols one may go for consuming drugs right even go for suicide because if the self is not happy then the self gives a much lower priority to the state of the body let the body suffer but ultimately i will be at peace with that kind of thought many times we destroy our bodies so <clears throat> these all things have to be taken care of while making a program for health sustainably mm. yeah anything you would like to add didi no no thank you the biggest problem that we can see in our country today is our population so you know don't we need to work out a solution for that first only then can really development of the nation work because right now the population is increasing at such a tremendous rate that uh, any kind of development that we plan we can't really get to 
you know this problem so don't we have to solve this problem of population first according to me uh, population itself is not not the problem <clears throat> so we have to see the, where we are looking at the problem so population with right understanding is an asset and the one without right understanding is a liability or a problem so when we are thinking about population also no we do not have to think in terms of the number of people who are there we have to think in terms of the level of understanding that the people are having so we need to focus on transforming our education we can see that still today the production is more than required at the level of nation if the entire population is able to understand harmony at all levels it can work further to turn the whole world into an undivided society in universal human order so this is one thing that population itself is not a problem whether the people are having right understanding and right feeling or not is the core issue and if you look at the multiplication process so as we suggest also no during the workshop that if one person is able to ensure right understanding in oneself in 10 years that's not in completeness at least the commitment and preparation is there that is getting developed in 10 years then in another 10 years one can develop 10 more people who are having the same level of same level of commitment and preparation and this way moving ahead we can have a program for 10 to the power 10 people and presently also if you see the population of the world is about 760 crores or something but we can make a sustainable very definite concrete program for 10 to the power 10 people and we can see that the resources which are available on the planet uh, they are much more than what we require it is uh, being said that the production of food is six times required and one third of the food is getting wasted away so there is no dearth of food again there is no dearth of clothes we could see during the winter season also no? like here where i am residing uh, we have a market the local market every friday and whenever we go to the market we can see that so many woolen garments are being sold and very uh, affordable rates in 200 rupees you can get a uh, woolen garment <laughs> so there is no dearth of clothes also with the mass manufacturing of clothes taking place isn't it there may be some people who are not having a house of their own but the major cause for that is migration from the villages in villages there will be no person who is not having a house in cities we can see that there are people uh, living on food path there are people living in very shabby uh, locations but in the villages we can see that every person has a house of one's own there is no person without a house of one's own so they know dearth of houses also maybe it is not a pakka house but still people have houses which are able to ensure health of the people uh, in fact we have to look into the better ways of making houses so if you look at the facilities which are uh, let's say abundant the problem is that we are not able to ensure harmonious relationship in the family harmonious relationship in the neighborhood we are differentiating and that's why we have so much of struggle we have caste struggle we have communal struggle we have racial struggle so ultimately it boils down to ensuring the right understanding it's not the population that is a problem even in our own country we can see that there are some areas which are densely populated and there are some areas which are quite sparsely populated and again there is no dearth of resources there the justice is not being ensured that is the core issue people are migrating from some states of the country in our own country to other parts of the country because the justice is not being ensured because the preservation is not being ensured so we have to look into those issues those issues if you are able to resolve then we can have a sustainable program for happy and prosperous society and mm -hmm. the population currently is an asset for us second thing i'll say so uh, this was the second thing first thing i said that population itself is not the problem second thing i said that the real problem lies with the lack of justice the lack of preservation the lack of right understanding right feeling society thirdly we can see that with right understanding right feeling we can decide uh, the size of our family so if i am able to see that there is so much uh, such a big population with not having right understanding right feeling so i can think of uh, raising my family in a similar manner so that i can invest my time for the rest of the society also i can spare my time educating the people around also so this is also another possibility that we have to look into yeah true you would like to add something didi no no so this was all that we had 
as FAQs.